Good morning, Mike. You're Good in to see you. You're in a different space. It looks nice. It looks, I am. Uh, it looks exciting. Um, we're um, uh, we're happy to be back. Yeah, we're happy to be back and streaming. And we're in Minecraft again today, which doesn't probably seem like a surprise, but uh, but we're mixing it up a little bit this morning. We're going to be talking about transitioning from block based coding. Um, to text-based coding using Python, which is a very, very popular um, concept now. Like, I think the scaffold is super. I talk a lot, to be honest, about the scaffold of like programming and and coding and computational thinking for for kids. And I I focus a lot on that like K to eight range, but. Like this really like is how you get kids that were like are super comfortable in like that six, seven and eight range to get ready for doing, you know, um, some harder stuff. You know, there are kids all over the map in terms of like their competencies and capabilities and how well they take to it. And, you know, frankly, how much they do at home and stuff like that, because they want to and they have fun with it. Right. Uh, so, so this is good because it, it'll hopefully help teachers understand how to move their students, especially those students that are kind of pushing them, um, into kind of the next level. Right. Yeah. The, and like you say about the scaffold, um, I mean, it's, for, we got a few things going here. One is block-based coding is definitely, um, something kids are becoming more familiar with and learning more about, um, we definitely, you know, there's a place where we want a lot of them to at least dabble and start to see what's what's happening with uh, text-based environments. Like you said, Python right now is is kind of a hot language to learn. Um, mm -hmm. I was super excited when I heard, I think it was at FETC, um, you know, I was talking to some of the people on the education team, and they said that Python was coming to um, to make code with Code Builder, and I was like, you know, I was so excited, and I got home. And it was literally like there, like poof, like I thought I was going to be waiting for months or something. Like so, magic. Like magic. So it is here. It is now. Um, and they did a really nice job. I'll pop into Code Builder now. You know what? Yeah. And um, so Code Builder, we'll do a little bit of the basic stuff. Um, but one thing that's neat is as you start seeing here, when you're working on a project, as you start doing it in a different coding environment, It'll give you a little icon here, like in, the, in other words, these two I was doing in Python, this one's JavaScript, this one's um, block-based, okay? So that's one nice thing. Um, when I'm in any normal project now, let's, say, let's just call this uh, Mike Washburn is awesome, okay? Um, so in here, this is my regular, you know, this is the code builder or make code interface here. And right now I'm in, in block code, right? And as a little recap for those who might not have been with us the last couple of times we did this, these are all the different areas, or we call these drawers, or at least Microsoft Make Code calls these drawers. And each drawer has all the contents in it that are related to the, this idea. So if we're talking about player commands or blocks or mobs and such, and you have tons and tons of commands. You can also search for them. Like if I wanted to do an on chat command or something, here's some stuff I can get to, right? So really amazing um, in terms of all of the different things we can code in make code um, for Minecraft. Uh, essentially, the way I like to look at it is if you're accustomed to using commands at all, like time, set, day, or what have you, in Code Builder, there is likely a command for that. So I'm gonna say like, let's say we wanna type in day to make it day instead of that whole time set day. If I go to gameplay, I can go to something like time set day, okay? And good morning, Ms. Lee. And morning. real simply, so I just typed in like day, and now it did the same thing using block-based code. Okay, so, you know, when we're going to talk a lot today about the transitioning from block to text based. And what's kind of nice is that it makes it so that, you know, Mike was talking about scaffolding. So with scaffolding, you know, it's all about learning something and then moving on and moving on and moving on, right? So in this case, um, the, 
we can say, hmm, so I kind of get this idea at least, right? So I'm going to go to Python here, and it's going to actually convert that to Python. Now, that's not to say that I couldn't have started straight away in Python, but it's kind of nice to say, hmm, let me start to dabble and see if this is what I want to do. How would I do simply this in Python? And I jump here to Python, and there's a this is this is a, a, a command we'll get comfortable with because you'll use it a lot. So this is essentially um, nothing more than this on chat command, which is one of the simple block based ones, right? So go back here for a second. So on chat, and then this part here is the follow up to that, which is the player on chat day. That's what I was going to type in. So again, just to kind of show it step by step here, on on chat command day, the day is the part I'm typing in, right? So yeah. that just goes to show that this is the one command that goes together, right? Then in here is what's going to happen when we do this subroutine or, or this function, let's say, called chat, you know, day. And in this case, the code for that is gameplay.time set gameplay.time day. And that's the command. Now, why don't we break this out for a minute and say, okay, so we're get so first off with with text based coding you're often going to get you're going to have to get a little bit used to things like this in, indentation is important yeah so like, <laughs> this is the command but then what it's going to do I have to indent so what did it say there it said game oh here we go game play so see and the nice thing is it has this helper text for me so game play dot time whoops see I did something wrong already time set and I could either continue writing it or I could just now that I'm on this I could hit uh whoops I could hit tab let's try that again time underscore set if I hit enter it'll work if I use the arrows it'll toggle through these but I'm gonna do set and day day time day and one of the one of the other one of the other things that people have to get used to I was just thinking is getting things wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like which I'm doing right now. Be, you have to be perfectly comfortable when you're coding in like Python um, um, with making, with the idea that you're going to make mistakes. Right. That, that things are not going to be right the first time and that you're going to have to, uh, like it is, it is part of coding is debugging is getting it wrong and fixing it. Yeah. It is, it's literally like ingrained into the process of coding. Yes. Absolutely. And you have to be, you have to be perfectly comfortable with that. You have to be just like understanding that you're, you're, you're going to get it wrong a bunch of times and then eventually you're going to get it right. And then you're going right. to get the next thing wrong inevitably. And you're going to get those things right eventually too. It ha yes. you have to be completely comfortable with this. If, now, if, it's, if getting things wrong is something that upsets you, like, and you get frustrated over, you know, small mistakes, then then this is a good way to stretch those frustrations and and like and like you know learn how to deal with it because it's it's ingrained in the in the actual act of coding is the act of getting yeah. it wrong. And now, interestingly, I make a lot of mistakes when I'm coding and it's 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 often when and um getting things wrong in front of your students and that is okay absolutely it is funny because when I'm doing this a lot of times I'll get that feeling of stress like oh my gosh people are watching me do this and I'm making a mistake I try very hard to make it to to model that it is the process um it's great to have people in the chat and to have Mike here because a lot of times when we do start to botch our code a little bit it's kind of it, it really shows that pair programming idea of like hey let's let's look at this together because when you work with students in code i'll tell you i don't know all of the the code at all but what i'll find a lot of times is i almost get nervous too when i'm going to sit down with a student who's doing things that might even be beyond me but the part i might be starting to get good at is um just sort of proofreading or editing you know for the con for the syntax so I'll find, maybe I'll find that missing semicolon that they won't or something, and then I feel like a hero. 
Um, but anyway, so let's see if we've got this right while you're talking about that. So I, I just converted it. Remember, I took this out and I decided, let me try to type it in, um, which was really just kind of copying what I'd seen before. But let's see. So we're going to actually go time set night just to get there. And I typed in day and it did work. Okay. So there's my code. So on chat, um, I'm going to make it day and I'm going to do it by typing in the word day on chat, which is this function. Okay. So again, now <laughs> here's an interesting thing too, actually, I'm going to mess this up. Like Mike said, um, afternoon. Okay. We want to set it to afternoon. Now, first off, you see the squiggly there. That's lovely because it tells us there's something, uh, not quite right here, which is really great. But the other thing that's interesting about this is in Code Builder, if, if the code is all right, I can actually toggle between any of these. But if the code is wrong, it's going to give me an error and say, wait a minute, something's wrong. It doesn't right. want to bring bad code to block-based coding, Blocks. probably because it doesn't understand it. So if I do change this back to being correct, let's see if that works. Not, that's not right. Let's see if the capital day, yeah, so that should be okay. So now if I go back, I can actually toggle back and forth, which is really nice. I can even now go to JavaScript. So right now I've seen, so this is gameplay time set, gameplay time day. This is the, and see how they actually call it a function here in JavaScript. So, and, and notice the syntactical, syntactical, that's a good word, differences here. Um, in the on chat is pretty much the same. But there are differences or nuances when we go between um, JavaScript and Python. Okay, let's look at that again. So this is gameplay time set gameplay time. And remember, here it had the function stuff and whatnot, right? And now we go back to um, JavaScript, and this does look a little different. In fact, yeah. So those are things to either get used to, or more often than not, you'll kind of stick more with one language. Um, I'm especially excited these days about Python just because people are using it in, in you know, a lot of different, uh, you know, environments. So it, it was a smart choice, I think, for Minecraft to say, hey, let's bring in Python because, again, Python is, is one of the standard languages people are using to teach right now. And in fact, tomorrow morning, um, we have Bob Irving joining us and he's going to actually do some straight up Python. So not with Minecraft, not with anything, just teaching the basics of coding Python. Um, so there you go. So that's that. All right. So now what I want to show you about uh, get back into sort of the way kind of code builder works and stuff is there are all these different um, tutorials and we talked about these the last time, but a slight difference, you know, our popular chicken rain one is the one where the chickens start falling from the sky. So it used to be that there was only a tutorial for block base. Now they added Python and JavaScript tutorials, which is awesome. So if I decide to go straight up with Python, it will bring me through a step-by-step -step tutorial, kind of like the block based one does, did, but I'm going to be typing a little bit. So in this case, it's starting me with the code for spawning mobs. Mobs.spawn, and then you know, here again, it's it's all the different things I could spawn with the helper text and then position. And we've talked about this before in, <laughs> it's funny, hopefully, you know, especially for those of you who have been joining us quite a bit, you're starting to see that things like the coordinates, you know, we've talked about the three coordinates when we've done this as a command or a command block or anything. So it's starting to, um, you know, we're starting to see at least the same uh, you know, some of the same things translate over, which again is part of this whole idea of transitioning and scaffolding is that as we start to understand certain aspects, you know, it becomes a little easier to, to move on. So here we go. So I'm going to play this and there comes my one chicken. That's from Mark Otter. Or no, the one's not from Mark Otter. The hundred are going to be from Mark Otter. Um, and then here we go. So run your code, which we did. Okay. Now, we're going to learn a loop. And if you remember, we've done loops before with the repeat command in regular block based coding. Now, um, Python and JavaScript both handle loops a little different. But again, here through this tutorial, it's kind of walking us through at least this first time. So we're going to go, oops, mess that up. 
we're going to go here now, and this is going to be before this. So I'm going to uh, do this. 4i in range 100. So this means it's going to be a loop, essentially, that's going to do this 100 times. And you notice now I have something wrong here. Anybody remember what I have to do here, more than likely? Or actually, you can see it up here. Anyone? Anyone? And Mike, I, love, I, I, love, I love when you pull the stream. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then have the uh, curly brace. We got a curly brace. It's not going to be a curly brace this time. 30 seconds later. <laughs> Mike, Mike. I have Mike no thoughts. On, I have no thoughts on this. I'm just watching. Really? We talked about this before. We need that tab. I, yeah, I, I didn't love even show it here. We're kind of cheating. You love it. I, it's funny. Okay. I, right behind me, I have books on coding in Python. Um, you know, that break I them out. Break them I out. Have, I have not read yet. We've talked about this right. before because you just started learning this fairly recently as well. Yeah, yeah. I also have like a humble bundle. Had this great, like I have about every ebook you could ever want on coding. Um, so now I'm going to hit play, and this is for Mark Otter. Hey. So now, and remember, we've done that before, right? So here we go, though. So here's my chicken rain, and blah, blah, blah. So we did it. Well done. Um, now, here it is in Python. And again, I can go back and just take a look at what it would look like. This we've done before. Um, repeat 100, spawn, blah, 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 right? Now, you know, then you get into, this is how I feel about stuff like this with the transitioning and such is like okay so i know how to do that now all right that's all good so let's do um let's spawn other mobs right and what do we want mike how about maybe some parrots i have some pandas everybody loves pandas um and these we're gonna do uh so do we know where these pandas are gonna spawn <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? Aren't they going to spawn five blocks away from you? Yeah, yeah. So this is the X, right? So five relative to me, the X. Okay. And now, in theory, this should all happen uh, together at the same time, right? Because I'm just telling it for this rate, for the one to 100, do both of these things. Um, it's, yeah, so let's give this a shot. We got pandas, we got chickens. Oh, look at that. Pandas are fun. They do flips and stuff. OK. We have a zoo. I don't know how the do chickens and pandas get along so far. But the pandas, why are the pandas all looking like they're taking, oh, they're taking damage because they're hitting the cactuses, the cacti. They should stay away from the cacti. OK, so you get that, right? Now, we could also go back into that whole, you know, making it happen when we type in a command. And this is where a lot of times for me, I'm like, oh, man, I kind of forget a little bit how to do this. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to player on chat command, right? And let's see what happens if I now. So I just did this in block based. But I'm like, all right, let me now just translate it for ourselves. So here's that. So it's defining the on chat command, right? It's still doing this whole loop within that. And the on chat, um, I had told it to type, use the word spawn, right? So now if I type in spawn, it's going to do all this. So let's first. Sorry, everybody. So now there are pandas, there are chickens. So we did that. Now, of course, like I say, I would like to get to the point where you know we're comfortable saying, forget it, we can just do this all in Python. But I was just um, you know, kind of forgetting the exact way it was all typed in and all that. You know what I mean? And let's see here. All right. So cancel that. All right. So now let's go back here. And likewise, there are all these other. So this is kind of cool. I like this flower trail. I'll show you why in a second. Um, and I'm going to do this one in Python also. OK? So flower trail, I don't know if you remember this one. I'm going to alter it a bit. 
Um, but what it was doing is having us, as we walk, it's going to place blocks, right? But uh, so on the basic way it's done is def on traveled, okay? And then see where it says pass here. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, player dot on traveled walk comma on traveled okay i think that's right um this pass is like saying okay we want to define that something's going to happen when this is like the command the the we're setting up this um function for on traveled and when when it activates something's going to happen okay and the something's going to happen when we walk okay but it seems like they like to give you these little placeholders here called like pass. Now pass, nothing's going to happen right now, but I guess syntactically it's correct. So it allows us to do that. I'm going to say syntactically as many times as I can. Love it. Um, uh, so there we go. So we got, we've got pass now. And then when we go on, it's going to show us how to actually do this. So I'm going to now change the pass with blocks. It's not blocks, blocks dot place and I don't want to do these yellow flowers I want to do um, like white concrete okay so when I walk it's gonna place white concrete and I'm gonna say position uh, zero comma five comma zero and hopefully I did that right now what is gonna happen here people let's see if Brad or Wrenchy or Ms. Lee or Mark Otter, if any of them know. What's gonna happen now just when I walk? Are y'all as educators familiar with the term wait time? You know that term, Mike? Do they use that in Canada? Wait time, we don't have, I don't know what you're saying. You don't wait for anybody? <laughs> you don't know what I'm saying. So and we got Ben, Ben says concrete blocks above you. You're placing blocks above you, right? So yes, so wait time, yeah. Mike, you know how you said you walk? You, what? Nothing. You know what yeah. it is? No. Wait, oops. You don't know what wait time is? Um, so, <laughs> no, well, no, it's not that. But um, wait time is in, uh, in educational circles when we want to give our students an opportunity to answer. And we, you know, even though we have that awkward silence for a little while, if we wait a little while, hopefully they'll answer. So I just did that. Okay. See that, Mike? <laughs> I see. So I just walked around. You're laughing at me. Um, I'm talking about I'm talking about pedagogy here. It's the the pedagogy podcast. <laughs> the pedagogy um, of the pedagogy of streaming. No, is, no. The, well, is, really, is is awkward silences in stream? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is what's well, to allow for them? You're supposed to allow for the awkward silence because just like in the uh, classroom, don't know, you don't man. like when there's that awkward silence. No. Let's watch this. Let's see if this works too. Now, if I walk here, it should. Whoops, or not. I'm gonna walk on this tightrope here. Okay, and now there. Okay, so watch this. So let's say I was playing around with this before. So let's say I want to take this a step further and say, okay, I want it to place those five above me. And uh, now let's say we do, oh, give me an extra tab, which is not good there. So let's say, um, Is, is black concrete a thing as that? Yeah, it should be. So let's say we do this. Or actually, better yet. Mark, sometimes your jokes aren't good either. Oh, what did Mark say? To be fair. Jokes are much better than my coding. What? Whose jokes? Mine or? Mark. Or <laughs> his jokes. Oh, his jokes are better than his coding. Okay. Um, oops, see, you got to capital letters matter and stuff. Hot chocolate. I like hot chocolate. My kids drink hot chocolate all the time. Somebody making jokes about hot chocolate now? All right. So, and of course I could use a loop here too, but black concrete. All right. Are the Anybody block know? names are the block names the same uh, in Python as they are in in the slash in the text based commands? 
That's a great question. So let's say we wanted to um, give myself a uh, gosh, but, um, Otter is, is good at it, it, Otter's good for a good dad joke though. Oh, wait. Why is it not? Um, let's see what would be the um, give at S. Okay, here we go. White glazed terracotta concrete. Oh, so concrete, that's interesting. So remember, in this regard, I'd have to put concrete like two to get a different color of concrete, or maybe not. No, it's probably black underscore concrete. Try that. Okay. Maybe. Okay. But, oh, or, or white underscore. Yeah, you might be able to. White. I think the no, white yeah, one. So I think the white. I think oh. the white one is concrete. Mm -hmm. yeah, but look. Or, or concrete underscore black. Maybe. Let's see, but you would no, because if so, then it would show it there. Oh. Um, concrete. Oh no, no, no. Here we go. Ready? One, two. So two is going to be the different color. Okay. So, so to answer your question, it's no. done differently. <laughs> no. So here, watch what I have now. Now, what do you think you're going to do now when I walk around? It's going to be like a checker. Kind of, yeah. Now let's see. Ready? Look at all those pigs just dead. Yeah. I think they call them cows. Um, so it's kind of a checker. It's It depends how, oh, well, yeah. But it's, uh, but it's kind of a neat way to draw around the map problem is you have to be pretty steady if you're gonna like i was thinking it should let's see if i go that way it's one thing let's see what happens if i go this way depends which way your x no because the x should be yeah well that's nicer right so there you have walk, it walk backwards in a straight line Lift, okay looking that's up. good looking up yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. like that is that it? Or let's see if I have to go. I don't know if I see, that's interesting because the it depends, you know, of course, where the X is. Right? So think of all the crazy things you could do, though, with this. And of course, it might even be smarter to do it as a place and, uh, and not do it as, or have a fill, right? So let's see how it's going to work with fill. Um, instead of the traveling okay so we're going to now we're going to play around a little um okay so phil hmm let's see how we want us to do this phil operation hollow i would think that probably do more um all right so let's see if we can figure out how this is supposed to work with the fill command in Python. So here we go, ready? So we're gonna go back to our our cheating ways. If I can get out of this, I guess I gotta finish this first. Okay, finish. So now <clears throat> we're gonna go home here for a second. We're gonna go back to, um, to Mike Washburn is awesome. And we're gonna do something like the fill command. Okay, and then we're going to see how it wants us to do that in in uh, Python or JavaScript, and then we're going to play around with that. So, real simply, if I just go to here, and I actually want to see a few things here. So, if I go from zero 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 to ten, whoops, ten, 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 to remember what that's going to create. Uh, hello, light blue wool. Okay. So this is going to create anyone, anyone could go to Fortnite like tunnel to protect you from players. Yes, you could. So you could set it up so that you're using like like or tunnel or or like as if you're building platforms, right? Or platforms or ramps in mine in Fortnite, but in Minecraft. Ben and Kelly. Ben Kelly, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what did I tell him it had to do here? I wanted to type in Phil. Okay. Ben Phil. Kelly is awesome, by the way. Every chance I get. I want to remind people of how freaking awesome Ben Kelly is. Me also. Um, in fact, why haven't we had Ben Kelly on yet? In something cool? I, I think oh, yeah. not yeah. only will Ben Kelly be on this stream sometime soon if he can, but I'm working on a project that we're not going to announce just yet. 
that Ben Kelly definitely needs to be on. What do you think, Steve? I think so too. Yes. Especially if we were I talking hope. about the sustainable development goals in Minecraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That would be. Or, uh, yeah, for sure. So, so here's this is interesting. So when we do the fill command in Python, this is what it looks like. So it does this interesting position from where it starts to where it ends, fill operation hollow. And OK, so that's how it wants to look, right? So this just gets me thinking of what we can do you know, kind of interestingly. But uh, what I actually want to try is one thing first. Um, so the let's go back to this for a second. So it's always interesting to me that there's the position, there's the, um, there's the relative and the world position, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious how that translates in code, if it does it as absolute position or world position, but we'll see in a moment. Ah, world, okay. So it's basically saying world this or position by default is relative, okay? So we're gonna go back to, um, what was the other one, just position, I think? Yeah, pose. All right. So this is where it's relative to where we are. So any coordinates we put in here again are relative to where we are. So we're going to start out with say five above us, and we're going to go to 10, 15, 10. Now this is going to be a cube still, right? Now, um, let's make this. So when I type fill, we're going to go a little crazy here, okay, people? We're going to, oops. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste this and see. Oh, no, I needed the, this. did I get this part? I need that also. Okay. So now, boom. Oops. So again, we got to be careful about our indenting. All right. So here we go. So right now, well, right now it's going to do two of the exact same thing. But let's say we go, um, Let me think here. Let's say we want to go above that again and just build another one right on top of it. Okay. So in theory, now we're going to end up with two cubes, right? And just to show the difference a little better, let's use a different uh, material. And hopefully, as I start typing, yep. So what do we want this other material to be? Let's say, um, how about lime wool? Because that's probably not the worst color ever. Um, so we're going to now, when I type in fill, what should it do? Anyone, anyone, anyone? Max is here. Who's Max? Oh, Max wants us to Max buy the subscriber. Max is a spammer. That's great. Well, you know, it, it's always a compliment once you start getting people to spam your chat because it means people are starting to find you. So, you know, until they start doing bad things. Um, uh, so here we go. Ready? So now, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> We know why that happened, but whoa, why is the, uh, we don't like, um, what are those things called again? I'm just drawing a blank. Those are uh, um, phantoms, so that is. So anyway, so what I forgot to do was I, I still went from 0, 15 to that. So if we go here now, it's 25. Now I go fill and yeah, oh, so there we go. Okay, so if you start to think about <laughs> the possibilities here, right, with copying and pasting code, this gets more efficient than dragging in block after block or, or whatnot. Um, let's see. So we are going to now. Oops, come on, I don't want to be there. So let's say, um, well, this is interesting too, because is this, this is still going to always be relative to where I am, right? So if I go back to this being five, no, not that, um, yeah, five is good for that. Let's say negative. 10 hmm, to 0. Let's just see what this does. So this should um, now it should end up with three cubes, I hope. Let's see. Let's start over here again. 
Shouts is here. Iterate with the for loop, absolutely. Yeah, let's do that too when we get to that point. Um, so what did I say? It was going to be, going to be fill. Now we should have, yeah, okay. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So funny. It's, <laughs> I keep doing not what I mean to do, but. So we wanted to make it, what I wanted to do is have another cube next to the blue. So what did I do wrong there? So if I went from, uh, I still really want this to go to 15. And why did it do that? I wanted to go from, that was from 10, like from zero to 10. Oh, so that was silly. That was zero to negative 10. Do I need something here? Maybe negative 10 here also. I'm not doing this quite right. Because it's, uh, but let's try it. Silly. Yeah, we're getting closer. Not exactly what I wanted, but we get the idea. But now, like Shouts was saying, now we can get into things like loops, right? So let's say we decide to go back to here just to see the real simple syntax of the loop. Um, <laughs> so let's say, but now that's interesting because then we would need to start using some variables, I think, too, and stuff, right? So if we do a loop, Let's say we repeat this four times. And let's just say we do two of these. All right. Um, right now, they're going to be, yeah, I think we need a variable for this. Um, it's too early in the morning. My brain is going to start hurting. So we're going to make a variable called um, length, let's say. And maybe a variable called more, just in case. I'm not sure if we need that. Um, maybe. And maybe height also. But let's see. So we're going to set variable width and, oops, oops not that. Set variable, that's what, oh, okay. Set variable length. So we're going to start them both at zero. And let's say that's going to be what's going to be in this, uh, in here. So we're going to put, actually, it doesn't even have to be, it could be the same variable length, length to, now we might want something like length plus 10 or something. Um, Math in here somewhere. Math, duh. Okay. So then we're going to say to length plus 10 and length plus 10 again. If let, me do, well, let me do this here. Yeah. Oops. Okay, so in theory, what happened to my length plus 10 here? I lost it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, go back here. That's not what I want. Length plus 10 and length plus 10. All right, so now, and I did this totally wrong. This is silly. Okay, so now we're going from five to, so length, if length is zero, now it's going to go from 0 to 10 and 0 to 10. So then this one, let's say we do, I'm sure this isn't going to be quite right, but let's say from length plus 10 to length plus 10. Let's try that again and just see. Mike's playing satisfactory. Mike is trying to figure out how to ban spammers. Oh, cool. There's the mod. There's the whole mod. I got um, it. Okay, cool. Done. 
just did it. All right, it. done, gone. All right, now, uh, just curious what this would do now. If you do that plus 10 to that plus, gosh, oh, see, this is what's funny. Once I get it, I'd rather copy and paste um, the text code. Um, just curious if this will even do what we want it to do. I don't, not exactly. Actually, it won't. But if we do this, wait, let's see. Let's see. If we were, to, if this were to work, no promises here, folks. After I do this once, I think I would want to do a little math here that also assumes I want to set the variable length now to a little mathness. And let's say we keep setting it to itself plus 10 or something, right? I'm sure, like I said, we'll see where this goes horribly wrong. Yeah, no, we can't. We're not trying to convert it yet. Come on, give me a break. Do -do -do. Length to, come on. All right, let's try this again. Length plus 10. All right, so let's see if this, in theory, do I want to let me roll pike as well these blocks? Doesn't like this stray blocks here. It still says it can't convert it. No, I guess this and this. All right, so now my thinking is that this is going to hopefully do four cubes or eight cubes it's that's going to go it's not going to work but blue green blue green blue green blue green anybody think it's going to work yeah yes um you do you're too kind i don't think it's going to work let's go over here i feel like there's something little that we're doing wrong live coding ladies and gentlemen errors and all um phil Whoa, that's pretty cool. Not at all what I had in mind, but hey. Look at that. That's exactly what I meant to do, right? Isn't that cool, Mike? Amazing. Now imagine if I meant to do that. Um, four, four. I don't know why I didn't end up with an extra. Well, there are no extra mistakes, blue. Steve. Just happy accidents. Just happy accidents. So now, let's look at it now in Python. All right. Oh, that makes it look so easy. Um, so now this is saying, I do like that the variables are set. So the variables, so on chat, so I love this. So it's showing that we are setting width and length here, okay? And I'm a little curious, x5 to, oh, okay, this does make sense actually, because we did tell it to go. Um, let's try this, because really originally, length plus 10, 15, that's actually starting higher to begin with. That wasn't really the intent. So five, 10, so that shouldn't be 10 though. I mean, that's what that one's doing, but five. Oh, 15, it's doing this, oh, I see, okay, 15. So let's see what happens now, okay. Ready? Oh. oh, so that's interesting. That is also not at all what I thought would happen. Look at that. It's doing, why is it doing that? So light blue lime, length five, length, length plus 10, five, length plus 10. Oh, you know what's happening? Yeah. So what is happening, which is interesting because I just changed that, is it's probably making this one out of wool, out of, here, watch what's going to happen. I'm going to change this to just do this once. And I think the once it'll work because I think what's happening is it's creating this lime one and then it's replacing the same place with blue right after. Does that make sense? People following? <laughs> So, Phil, yeah, so 
Yep, that's kind of what I, that's weird though too, because that's, why is it giving me like a double length of blue? So we got blue wool, length plus 10, plus 10. Why the heck is it doing that? Maybe that's part of the problem. Length plus 10, length plus 10, and plus 20. All right. And then length equals length plus 10 at the end of the this before it does the second loop is what it should do. So let's try this again. I'm having fun. I hope everybody else is. All right. That's more what I was expecting. Now let's try to repeat it four times and it's going to fail again, I think. But maybe not. I think what's going to happen is I think we're still going to, um, maybe it'll work this time. Wait. I'm going for, you know, the alternating. <laughs> no, see, it keeps, I'm pretty sure what's happening, which this is funny. I think what's happening is it is creating this blue cube. Then it's creating a wool one, but then because we're going up by one, it's immediately replacing this one by that. So what if we did this? Yeah, maybe that'll work. All right, ready? Who thinks it's gonna work? I think it's gonna work. <laughs> it worked, Mike, it worked. We did it. Of course it worked. Now, well, of course, 30 second time is a charm. Now we can get crazy, watch this, ready? And I'm sure there's so much more we can do, but. Ready for it, Mike? Yeah. What's it gonna do? You know, you know. So that. You were just like. So think of all the things we could do here. Like and they, each one of those, each one of those is hollow. So imagine making some sort of like maze system that changes from thing to thing. So you go from a green maze to a blue maze, and then it becomes something, and you have to get all the way out at the end. Let's see. Ah, <laughs> yes, failure. It's all about failure, Brad. And honestly, um, you know, it is funny because. I'm not entirely comfortable with it. We always talk about the importance of embracing failure, and I believe it 1,000%. I, I believe in that idea, but it's still, we struggle with it. Um, but but how fun is it to, you know, kind of work through it and then come out the other side? No pun intended as I come out here. Oof. All right. So now yeah. just to think of what we can do. We can do so many new things. We can now go like this. Let's see what happens when we do some more stuff. Uh, it keeps doing that. Let's see. I don't think I want that. Right here, we got to go back here. Here. So now let's say we say we add a variable height. Okay. And now we say over here, we say, I'm just curious, if we go height, and then height plus 10, and then I think we would want the same thing here. Now, so I do love when the squiggly start going away because I know at least it should work. The Great Wall of China, no kidding. Yeah. All right, now let's see. Phil. Now I'm hoping it went up also. Yeah. Uh, did it? Ah, that is interesting. Oh, that's kind of cool. I meant to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and now, I mean, so you get the idea. I have a feeling this is one of those things I could go on and on and on. Um, 
any other thoughts of like, so then, I mean, then of course you get into everything. So this, what I hope you got out of that is that we went from saying, all right, let me, I'm comfortable with figuring out the basic filling with, and the variables initially with block coding, right? But then I'm like, you know what, I really want to play around in the text and um, this is interesting too. I don't know where these came from. I don't remember putting those in there. So they must have just been something else that we ended up with that uh, kind of dropped in there. Um, or maybe not. Wait, that's weird. Length two. We never. Length two. Where was. Oh, this all got messed up. Oh, that's weird. Height. Remember how. What did I just do? Because we had. We had to find. Um, length, width, and height, and now they went away. But all right, so there we go. These are the original ones. But it's funny that they. Why did they end up down here? I would think they would have to be declared up here, or at least I would want them to be. Um, and I have no idea what that length two is. So anyway, um, the the idea being that we can go on and on and on. And I again like starting with. Some of these, like the, um, the tutorials, especially the ones. So some of them, let's see. Spleef is a fun one. Man, they really, they really up their game because when they first launched Python, only a few of the tutorials had a, a Python one. But here's creating the Spleef game in purely in code. So we're gonna go ahead and do it. We're gonna do def on. See, what I love about this, too, is with the coding, like my kids, you know, I teach game design, um, and I love when they could start thinking, like, hey, I could create a mini game completely in code, mm -hmm. um, you know? And, oh, that was weird. I did not say over paste. I said nothing of the sort. And how did that to make fun? Pass player dot on chat. Spleef hmm? on chat. Okay, so again, just for review, who wants to tell me what that pass means there? Mike, do you remember? No. Nope. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Come on. Pass. So something has come. Yeah, it's a placeholder, right? Thank you. I'm glad we have been here. So that just means, in other words, I think the idea is they often want you to be able to feel like you're able to set up the function before we're sure what we want it to do, right? The, this is the what we want it to do. So now, look at this. Everybody loves lava. Blocks.fill lava. The thing I hate about this is, or don't love about this, is that it, a lot of times the text gets right in my way when I'm trying to, although if you notice it actually is, leaving just enough room for me to follow it. Now we're kind of should be getting comfortable with these position things, right? So all right, let's see. Should we quiz the chat here, Mike? Ooh, it didn't like that really. That should be a negative one. Let's see. All right. So where's it gonna fill this lava? From where to where? It's mm. a good question. Anybody? Where's the lava going to be? Based on relative to where I am. Oh, come on. Ben, Brad, just below. Okay, good. So we're going to now start this. So we're going to say on chat, did we tell it what the chat was going to be? Spleef, right? So watch. So boom. So there's my lava. A game of Spleef. Anybody, if you don't know what Spleef is, Spleef is a game where you have a bunch of different levels and you're either like in some versions, you might throw snowballs at the ground and it, it breaks the ground below and the person you're playing against falls through or you break the blocks below them. And the goal is to have them fall through all the different levels to um, end up in the lava. It's kind of like dodgeball. Nice. Um, yeah. So now we're going to now go, we're going to add some snow here. And it talks through step by step. Blocks.fill 
snow position zero four zero using the cursor comma position 10 for 10 now and ask you all again <laughs> where's where, ooh, I ended up here. where's the snow gonna fill when i start this it's gonna refill the lava and then this snow where's the snow gonna fill above you four blocks very good mike all right so we got that right we're gonna just keep going for a minute Hmm. Give you a little briefing. We have yeah. about three minutes left. Yeah. All right. Let's just show this then. Um, just to get the end of what we would have done with this. So what we just did was we basically created the start of this spleef game. Now the idea of spleef again is if I was playing with you up here, Mike, I would be breaking these under you and trying to make you fall through to the um, lava. The, the Xbox version of Minecraft comes built in with some mini games. One is, they called it um, Tumble, which is the same idea. Um, but anyway, the goal with this game would be to then have a bunch of different layers, levels, right, platforms, and you'd start maybe up here, and we'd be fighting until one of us fell all the way down. Um, and again, once we start copying and pasting and using any kind of variables and stuff, it only becomes easier. So go ahead and you know play around with some of these tutorials. Play around with them in um, in the different. Let's see. I'm just gonna go through this. So this finishes. Boom, boom, and it does show something with the variables. Um, I could show it again. Here it is in Python. Here the same thing is in JavaScript, slightly different. And here the same thing is. Oops, can you block. Okay, so it becomes starts to become a function of what you're you know either comfortable with or. Whatnot, but the idea, as Mike pointed out earlier in the stream, is we're talking about scaffolding. We're talking about guiding kids through the process. You know, there's that next the kids, especially that are ready for that next level. I'll also say that I got to a point um, with uh, I, I I got to a point where um, what was I going to say? Oh, where I started noticing that kids that did start the text based coding. That actually comes more naturally to some of them once they're comfortable with it. So, um, you know, while it seems like it's this next level thing, some kids will find it actually easier and actually be more gravitate more towards it. So, uh, thanks everybody, you know, for joining us. I just want to give a couple of little shout outs to some of the other stuff we have going on this week. Um, today at 3 p.m., I'm super excited to be playing a little bit of Minecraft Dungeons. <laughs> <laughs> Very exciting. I, I, yes. And then tomorrow morning, we have uh, Bob Irving coming on to do some cool stuff with legit Python programming, like from scratch, like none of this uh, block two Python stuff. And then what else do we have going on this week, Mike? We have gone, Thursday. Gone home, game, gone home game study Thursday afternoon. Yep. Um, yeah. I feel that's like it's, that's oh, and, and you know what else? Friday yeah. afternoon. Friday afternoon, we're launching another set of Minecraft build challenges that I don't know how much I'm allowed to announce yet, but it's pretty exciting stuff. So nice. join us for that Friday afternoon, and then we'll let you know what else is going on throughout the week. But uh, as we'll always, see you, it's good, uh, fun stuff. Yeah, we'll see you this afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern. Yes, we will. Bye, everybody. Bye.